figure we might as well might as well warm up the fingers a little bit. We are going to be doing some cardistry today. Spoiler, cardistry is happening, but it is uh, it's magic trivia day. And as I say that, I say salutations, kindred spirits. Hey, welcome to the stream. Uh, Wednesday, four o'clock. That's my time slot. Let me take a peek at the uh, technicals. We've learned our lesson here. We always like to check these things. Boink, boink, boink. All right, let me say hello to the chat. Nice to see you guys hanging out before the show and uh, see some kindred spirits there. Got some interesting news for kindred spirits today. I'm sure a few of you have discovered this. Let me loosely segue into that news as we perform an effect. Yeah, an effect. <clears throat> I'm kind of making this up as I go. In fact, this is kind of my life. I, my whole life is an improv show these days. I just make up things as I go. Made up this little card sequence earlier today, been finessing it as the day went on. And I think this would be best done if you were here to like pick, if you could like pick one of the cards and, uh, tr oh, hold on. There we go. We could do a little better job on the mic. And truth be told, I would just, I would just force the card on you. So I would force the 10 of hearts. But aside from that, this is a pretty fair trick. So what I want you to do is keep your eye on the 10 of hearts. I'm going to give it a little squeeze as we bring in our new stickers. Yeah, that's my eat sleep magish sticker. These are, these are from the sticker pack at conjure.com. We throw these in your, in your order when you, when you buy a product from the store. There's more than one. That's Eat Sleep Magish. Here, let's give it a squeeze. That's the, I call this one the Peace Pips. The Peace Pips. This kind of symbolizes my general demeanor, peace, and uh, card tricks. And lastly, the what? The impossible little graphic I put together, nice die cut mail. Uh, <laughs> I'm reading Gary's. I mean Gary's comment. He got one in the mail. Die cut sticker. That's the impossible sticker, and that's your uh, introduction effect for the day. This is the sticker kit that I'm. Uh, these are. That's the whole. The whole trilogy, and I'll be giving one of these away today to our winner of the trivia contest. I'll tell you what our prize is. We're giving that, and uh, I'm going to give away one of my Trick Talk manuscripts. This is uh, the key, gives you all everything you need to know to become an instant success on short-form media, as long as you're willing to work 12 hours a day, uh, six days a week for two years straight. So someone's going to win that in the nice economy, ready to go <laughs> international mail. We're saving on international postage with thin, with thin prizes. All right, let's, uh, let me see, what's else on the list? Oh, oh, I gotta tell the members thing. Do I have, do I have something that would make this a little more, it's not there, it's not, is it, do I not have a graphic for this? I know what I can do, I'll pull it off my shelf. Here it is, boink, members. Guess what you have available today if you're uh, one of my YouTube members, this, which was originally a $15, 45-minute DVD and eventually a download, is now available free. Well, it's five bucks a month to be uh, the members uh, that access this information. We kind of keep the we kind of keep the advanced stuff tucked away and charge a little bit for it to keep the prying eyes out. Also helps the jam here. I guess I could do this. I did make a little graphic. Let me welcome the new members. Dale Baker, thank you. Monkey Dog, Big Ben YT, you were here last week tipping those. Uh, thank you for that. And Coyote Mixed Martial Arts. <laughs> Welcome to the membership and thank you for being part of the puzzle. All right, we did that. We, we, we got the things. And, and this also, if my website guy will ever figure out how I can upload a large file, this will be available at conjure.com. So if you don't have access to these things. And let me also say this, open thanks to Rich Aviles, who originally produced this thing. He gave me the file. He said, do what you want with it. Buy me a beer. I'm going to buy him a six pack. We'll get drunk and talk about the old days. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what's happening for members. And uh, there is one more thing. And this was a, 
this is an absolute last minute change of plans as I was getting on, uh, setting everything up. My buddy, Jimmy, you guys remember Jimmy. If you don't remember Jimmy, he was here. I have a picture. I do have a picture. Jimmy was here for Camp Con when we did the summer magic camp. He was kind enough to come on the stream and share some of his wisdom. Well, Jimmy's hit a speed bump, uh, literally and figuratively. And how can I best, uh, let me see if I can get a little share going on. Oh, speaking of shares, hey, Gary, remind me to talk about these pets. All right, let me uh, share. Oh, that's that's Patrick's pads. We're going to remove that. <laughs> and let's share Jimmy's thing. So Jimmy had a hit and run on his van. A hit and run on his van parked outside of his house. This van was recently purchased. He is, uh, has he got some more, a little bit more. It was re recently purchased. Jimmy bought a new van. Some low life hits and runs this van outside of his house. And now he's paying off a van that is, is total. Basically, it's undrivable. In addition to this, it's in the, uh, it's in the thick of summer. And Jimmy's having a hard time in general. Uh, uh, I'm not going to dwell on it. If you guys can help out Jimmy, do it. Go to the, I put the links to this in the description below. And I also put Jimmy's uh, blog, which gives access to his products. Maybe you go buy a manuscript and make yourself a better magician. But if you have a little money and you can spare it to help a good guy out, well, Jimmy's one of the good guys. And let me tell you, I know this man is not one to ask for help. He would not ask if he didn't need it. So if you can give, give. And if you can't, well, maybe you could share the GoFundMe or something like that and, you know, spread some good vibes. You know, we're about giving here. And uh, maybe this, I could do, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I was thinking I could do a giveaway. If you give, you drop a comment, screw all that. If you, if you can give, just give, you know, come on. That's what we do. All right. Yes, there, there. Grindle's saying the truth here. Jimmy is the real deal. He is a great guy. I haven't had a better friend in my 50 years on the planet. And uh, thank you guys for, for considering him. All right. Well, we did it. We got all the stuff done, the tricks, the promos, the news. We're helping a friend. All that's left now is magic trivia. Boink. Magic trivia. Here's our topics today, folks. Cardistry. Yeah, we're going to learn about the evolution of cardistry in the 21st century. Las Vegas Magi. Yeah, mag magicians in Las Vegas. Let's learn about some of the things that I know, and maybe you'll know more. And then we pulled some general magic history questions, a little something for everyone. And maybe I could tell you all how we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to have 10 questions. 10 questions. If you get a question right, your name will go on the wheel of prizes. That's right. We have the wheel. We're going to spin the wheel. One of 10 people will win the prize package today. And if you get a question right, your name goes on the wheel. I will be invoking the TikTok timer. This is how I am able to time myself when I'm doing certain things. If no one answers the question at the end of this, we'll default to another question. And hey, if you get one question right, let me say this clearly. If you get one question right, give the other people a chance to get in on the prizes. And then maybe after the timer's up, we'll do double entries for those who've already got one. If you get the vibe. All right. Without further ado, I think I got all the rules worked out. And if not, I'll just make up new rules as we go. Let's bring Magic Trivia back as we start. Topic number one, cardistry flourishes. Okay. This is a bit verbose. What's this question? Boink. For Your Entertainment Pleasure by Stephen Mitch. This is a book of Daryl's card magic. And in this book, uh, you'll find the snowshoe sandwich and the hot shot cut. These are very important flourishes in the evolution of uh, particular card magic and flourish what would eventually become cardistry. Most importantly in this book, you'll find an essay called In Praise of the Lowly Flourish. And this was Daryl's attempt at 
advocating flourishes in card magic. And this is something that was often frowned upon back in the day. A lot of the, you know, the older guard would say, be natural, don't display skill. And then here comes Daryl and he says, display skill, do it. There's reasons and places. And this is a book that's worth your attention for a number of reasons. That is one of them. And your question in relation to this book today is, what year was this book published? Trivia question number one, what year was For Your Entertainment Pleasure published? Answer that question. Your name will go on the wheel. Yes, these are Googleable questions. I'm trying to make them a little harder than average. You do get bonus points if you know them right off the top. Oh, Callie, you're so close, but so wrong. But man, that's a great guess. 1873, huh? You think? I, <clears throat> I realize my fault here now is not putting on the, uh, the timer, the slow mode on the stream. Two years after Marty was born. What year was that, Marty? Boom! Craft with Price coming in with 1982. 1982. And Phoenix, your name, Craft. I'm going to put Craft with the is going on the wheel. We have our first entry in the Wheel of Prizes. That book was published in 1982. Congratulations, Phoenix, and good luck moving forward. Remember, that's your first entry. That'll be the only entry unless someone else has a problem answering the question, then you can come in with another one. So in 1982, here we have Daryl advocating the use of, let's talk about what he was advocating here. This was, I remember reading, let me get the non-sticker deck. That book for your entertainment pleasure is where this cut, the hot shot cut, where Daryl shoots at a, that was a crappy one here, the hot shot cut where Daryl would shoot out a playing card. This really put flourishing and uh, integrating flourishes with card magic on the map, especially with that snowshoe sandwich routine. Ooh, I'm sucking at that today. Anyway, that's the move that was in there in Praise of the Lowly Flourish, 1982. And yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to keep my eyes on the, on the numbers a little more clearly. I am gonna check one thing if I can edit the, no, I'm not. I'm just going to allow human error. We're going to we're going to plug forward and allow human error. That's how we roll here. All right, let's let's go back to cardistry question number 2 and testify Marty. It is an awesome book and Daryl was well ahead of his time. I saw this material live in the mid 80s, you know. I I bought the book at his lecture right after it came out. It was uh, quite an eye opener. All right, <clears throat> next question. Let's move forward to 1987. So here we are about five years later. Harry, Harry Lorraine, who published the Apocalypse magazine for about 500 years. There's like 8,000 issues of this thing. Well, in issue eight in 1987, he published the Illogical Shuffle. The Illogical Shuffle. What is the Illogical Shuffle, Mr. Khan? Let me briefly show you the illogical shuffle. See if this looks familiar. It's this, 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 and not that. It's, it's this, 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 and this, and that. So this is the illogical shuffle. Many of you will recognize this as a forefather to some other flourishes. Notably, we have Jay Sankey with the, I think he called this the ultimate illogical shuffle. And this is a full deck. This is a full deck control. The point is this action, this action here was introduced in the mid 80s. It's introduced by Harry Lorraine in the Apocalypse Volume 8. And I'm just wondering who created the illogical shuffle. And if you're guessing Sybil, you're guessing too quick. I should disqualify the early guessers. Who created the illogical shuffle? And yeah, it would, we would get to know this as the Sybil cut years later, but this is not the Sybil cut. No, no, no. <clears throat> it is not Kenner. It is not Daryl. 
Marlowe, while generally a safe guess, is not the guess, and I forgot the timer. <laughs> you know, Troy Hoosier would vary this cut. He published his work on it in, uh, in a couple of places. The Minotaur, which was a Dan Harlan magazine. Jay Sankey published his thing. And then, yeah, eventually Chris Kenner would publish what he called the Five Faces of Sybil, which looks, I don't do it anymore. Okay, so my cardistry needs work, y'all. I'm, I'm not flying my cardistry flag. I'm watching the chat. We're looking for the creator of the... Hey, L.L. Barrett's got it by hook or crook. Coming in with Gianni Montiallo or Johnny, Johnny Montiallo, L.L.L. Barnett. You're on the wheel. Let me get you on here. L.L.L. -L -L Barnett. And boy, how much do we have to thank... How much do we have to thank this guy? If you're a cardistry guy and you don't give your praise to Gianni Montiallo, well, you're doing it wrong. Thank you, Gianni. And uh, hey, if you're interested in this uh, sequence, you know, I'm going to urge you to go to YouTube and Google Jay Sankey's handling of the illogical shuffle. It's a good one. It's a four minute tutorial waiting on you on Jay's channel, sharing the love here. All right, let's go back. What are we, let's, let's bring this into the multimedia world as we're talking about Dan and Dave Buck. Does this thing, let me see. Let's see if we can learn things together here. Um, that's going away. Nope, we've lost it. There was a universe where I could play this video that I had embedded. Oh, there's your question. Let me just, anyway, this was an embedded video. Dan, <clears throat> Dan and Dave Buck, twins, two twins, revolutionized, revolutionized flourishing with playing cards and ushered in the phrase cardistry in the early 2000s. Their epic DVD release, The Trilogy, contained over six hours of flourishy card magic and has sold over 25,000, 25,000. That is a lot of <laughs> that is a lot of card card DVDs. So here's the question about the Buck twins, who really put cardistry on the map, along with Hand Lords and a couple other guys. Question is, what was the title of the Buck twins' first release? It's a VHS tape, 2001. And I'll tell you what, these kids used to do. I saw them at a second deal convention. They would put their lecture notes and their uh, their VHS tapes in their backpack and go to these conventions. They sit in the corner and do their fancy flourishes and then people would buy their wares. Oh, Grindle, that's a good guess. The system. It was not the system. Not the system. It, it was featured. This video is featured as part of the system. It's on the system as a bonus content. I don't know if it's an Easter egg or if it's uh, if it's an actual featured featured thing there. Hey, Z Kelly, nice to know that we're hitting some speed bumps, but people are able to come up with the winners. Z Kelly, you you got on the wheel with pasteboard animations, pasteboard animations, and these two guys, the Buck Twins. We're talking art of play. We're talking. Cardistry Con, the Dan and Dave Buck line of cards. Quite a quite an amazing accomplishment for two young men. And if you don't know who the Buck twins are, well, you probably don't do cardistry. This will complete our cardistry uh, questions du jour. And Marty's got the down low for the simple cut. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of information. That sounds made up. Sybil Cup was named after Sybil Isabel Dorset. She had 16 split personalities. That's where Chris got the inspiration for the name. Okay, that might be truth. But I still think Marty makes things up sometimes. I don't know. All right. Let's move on. What's next? Las Vegas Magi. We're already in it. Here it is. For over 20 years, this man was the resident magician at the Golden Nugget. Downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street, Golden Nugget, 20 years. That's a pretty good run for a 
magician. Oddly enough, not the longest one, though. There's someone who's had a longer run. We'll talk about him in a few minutes. Boom. Boom. Danny, I think you just knew this. And uh, I love that. That's right. For over 20 years, he was the resident magician at the Golden Nugget, Mike Skinner. One of the deepest repertoires, Danny451, let me put you on the wheel. This man probably knew more magic than uh, anyone. Reportedly worked the Magic Castle for two weeks straight with never repeating an effect. You'd be lucky to have him visit your table at Lily Langtree's, which was the restaurant at the Golden Nugget, if I'm not mistaken. He's left us now, but if you want to learn more about him, there's his book, Classic Sampler. It's one of a few places you can get his information. You know I'd like to send you guys to the books. So that's Mike Skinner. All right, so about the same time Skinner was in the uh, Gold Nugget, there was another guy drumming up some business. And in 1994, this magician booked the first ever $100 million contract at the Monte Carlo. What? 1994. $100 million contract at the Monte Carlo. Who was this magician? Boink. This uh, real work. It's not Copperfield. Oh, Grindel got it. I blinked. I blinked and Grindel got it. Punk walk, Pepperhead. No surprise there. Being a former Vegas guy yourself, I know you know the guys. Put me on the wheel, Grindel. Good answer, bro. Yeah, no, Lance. Lance is the guy. Oh, I, I didn't do the thing. Here, boom. Lance Burton. Yes, 100 million. Here he is on Magic Magazine going, ah, it's this look. $100 million. That's like $8 billion in 1994. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, let me tell you this. Lance Burton has my favorite 10 minutes of magic. It's my all-time favorite magic act. If I had to watch one act only for the rest of my life, okay, 12 minutes. I'm watching Lance's 12 minutes over and over again. All right. <clears throat> if you haven't seen it, you the one you want to watch probably is uh, World's Greatest Magic or the Johnny Carson appearance. Whoops. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. We got Lance. We got Mike. Who's next? Las Vegas Magi. Question number three. Okay, so not Skinner. Who has the longest-running magic show in Las Vegas history? Longest-running magic show in Las Vegas history. Uh, spoiler, it's not uh, Siegfried and Roy. Copperfield. Not Copperfield, Roark. We're just going to guess Copperfield on every everyone. You know, Copperfield... He's the longest running magic show. He's performed more magic than any human alive that I'm aware of. And boy, what a show it is if you get the chance. But there's one show I would go see before it. And uh, Marty's got it. You know what, Marty? You're double dipping there. What's this? I'm going to, Marty, I'm going to give it to Jimmy. <laughs> Mac. I don't know. That doesn't count either. We're going to go down to number three. Silly me with Mac King. We're going to go clear cut, one answer. Marty has won before. Jimmy has won before. You guys don't need extra prizes. We're going to give it to Silly Me One, who got the whole answer in one shot. Silly Me One, I'm putting you on the wheel. Oh, let me just, if you don't know who Mac is, there he is. Longest running magic show in Mac King. Yeah, it's 22 years now, and you'll currently find him at the Excalibur. The Excalibur, where he is the king. <laughs> He's the king. And let me tell you, if I go to Vegas and uh, get a chance to see one show, it's that one. It's not Copperfield. It's not Chris Angel. And it's not Penn and Teller. It's Mac King. Because there's a reason he's the longest running magic show in Las Vegas. He's the best. Yes, he's a god. I clearly remember seeing Mac in the 80s. 1986, maybe 87. 
It's me and Tom Frank at a comedy club. A height of comedy clubs. The mid-80s, Matt King is headlining. That was a great night. All right. I think that's all of our Las Vegas Magi questions, and we thank all of them for being Las Vegas <laughs> Magi. I don't know. I'm new at this uh, game show shtick. Y'all bear with me while I figure out the segues. <clears throat> all right, what's next? I think we're going into general magic history. General magic history. We're going to wrap this up in about five minutes. That's my plan. Let's see how it goes. Ah, oh, a tie-in. This magician inspired Lance Burton. Who is it? Boink. Who inspired Lance Burton? It was that guy. What is that guy's name? Figure that out, and your name will go on the wheel of prize, and then you can maybe win some, uh, you know, handcrafted love from the Conjure.com House of Magic. Hey, Kyle, good to see you, brother. I hope your sponge balls are coming along, and I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. Zako the Great! Oh, wait, nope, silly me. You're already, get, you're already in. Zako the Great's in. You can't answer twice, bro. You established these rules. Zako the Great... And if it was someone else before him, oh, no, Bill Pearson. Oh, whoo, that was a close one. Bill, I almost I almost gave you the uh, Brett the Hitman heart screw job on that one. That's right. It is Channing Pollock. And man, I did have this wonderful slide queued up where we could watch Channing Pollock's act. But truth be told, I go play in that and I'll probably end up with some copyright strike because that's what happened last time I played someone else's crap on YouTube. I need to learn more about these things. Although that, 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 that video, which I encourage you to watch, you want to see where Lance got his skit? Go watch the Ed Sullivan show appearance of Channing Pollock. This guy. This guy was too cool for school. And that's how old I am. I actually say too cool for school. All right, here we go. Next question. We're going to go deeper down the history books. Here we go. The discovery of witchcraft. And yes, it's spelled that way. The discovery of witchcraft is generally regarded as the first ever magic book. Well, who wrote this book? And what year was it published? Who wrote this book? What year was it published? The first ever book designed, I guess, really to debunk the charlatans. You know, like this guy wasn't trying to teach people magic tricks. He was uh, trying to teach people that magi magicians aren't real. And uh, Bill, you already answered, but that's half the question. Again, we're going, uh, Joey M. Foley, you get me a date on that. I'll put you on the wheel. It's a two-parter, folks. I need the author and the year because I knew one of those, there we are. Oh, James Kim, that's not it. James Kim is the one that I wanted with the name and the date. That's right. We're looking at the discovery of witchcraft by Reginald Scott in what? Did they even, did they even make books in 1584? Well, this guy did. And if you can read this crazy writing, it's available through, I think, uh, Richard Kaufman reprinted this thing. So you could get a reprint of this interesting tome. And now we know where the first magic book came from, supposedly. <clears throat> hey, I'm just a me messenger, too. It was, Josh says it was a Tuesday. Man, if you only had the name, Josh, you might be on the wheel. All right, guys. Well, we're coming down to the wire. You got two questions left here. I've got one more history question, and then I have a Doug Con question. Do a little Doug Con trivia. All right, let's get this next history bit in. Here we are with this man portrayed a Chinaman, Chung Ling Su, and was killed doing the infamous bullet catch. But what was this magician's real name? First and last, please. Real name of Chung Ling Su, this guy. No, Donnie, it's not Channing Pollock. It's not Channing Pollock. I mean, Bill, you're already in the wheel. We're going to give this one to John Robertson with William Ellsworth Robinson. Billy would have been acceptable, Bill, but you're already on the wheel. So, John Robertson, you are going on there. Yeah, this guy 
This guy, and this is uh, the Jim Steinmeier book, The Glorious Deception. If you like magic history, you're going to do yourself a favor and get that book and read it. You can find it at most libraries. Uh, interesting to note that there is a theory that uh, his death with the bullet catch was a suicide. Yeah, maybe not an accident. Maybe he killed himself. Yeah, Bill says good book. Pretty much anything with Steinmeier's name on it is good, be it trick, be it book. Uh, he writes for Magic Magazine, Jim Steinmeier. Saw today he's going to be doing a master class. This should be a good one, folks. A master class for Vanishing Ink. This is the guy that produced magic for David Copperfield, Doug Henning. He's a master illusionist builder. He's just a super genius. He's a Disney Imagineer. Jim Steinmeier coming to Vanishing Ink master class. Unsight unseen, I'm going to recommend this event. I've seen Jim lecture. He knows what he's talking about. All right. We got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. One more to go. And that will be a Doug Con question. Let's get it up here now. Get your Google ready. See if you can figure this out. Chameleon Sandwich was my first trick to see print in 1994. Which magic magazine published this effect? And who authored this zine? Two-parter. Need the magic magazine where Chameleon Sandwich was originally published. And who, who authored it? Oh, we might need the timer on this one. <laughs> okay, Jake, you're halfway there. We need the year. No, we don't need the year. We need the zine. It's not genie. Okay, buddy. I'm going to put you on there. Here's why. John Rocker Bomber and Modus Operandi. It's only easy for you, Marty. There we go. Gary, no clue. You don't have Modus Operandi? The compilation of Rocker Bomber work? Da -da -da! Modus operandi, John Ruckerbomber, and Jake in game 64. Happy to see you get on the wheel, although you have all of this stuff already. So maybe, maybe Jake would like to defer his entry to another kindred spirit. I don't know. All right, that's that is the did we get to the end? Yes, we did. Next step, congratulate every all, everyone, and then we spin the wheel. So we can get this out of the way, and we go over here to this doohickey. I think it's right here, and boom. Here's our potential prize winners. That's the wrong thing. I'm just going to leave it there and not move it. Big Ben YT. You know what, Ben? I dig your jam. I appreciate you joining the membership. And you're on the wheel. Let me put you on there, Big Ben YT. Sometimes all you have to do is be a supporter. And remember, we allow for human error. Plus, I don't know. I'm, I, it's, it's, it's my skit. I'll just do whatever I want. <laughs> here we go, guys. I'm about to push this wheel. It says right here, click to spin. And I'm going to click it in three, two, one. Boink. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Phoenix, so close. L. L. Barnett. L. L. Barnett. Why does this always go wonky on me? Can we bring it this way? Does that work? What if I did this? Does that help? It doesn't matter. It's L. L. Barnett. Woo. <laughs> now I'm just making a mess. Woo! All kinds of technical fun. L, 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 Barrett. What you're going to do is send me an email. And what I'm going to need is your screen name. Make sure it's you. Please do this immediately. And then also a mailing address. And then I'm going to send you, uh, I'll sign it. I'll send you a signed edition of this. This is going to give you, uh, in addition to my essays on how to be a master media producer, there are several video instructionals. You can learn five of my viral routines, and then you're also going to get the conjure.com point sticker pack, which, you know, 
I include the stickers with people that order from conjure.com. So that's that skit. And that is uh, the completion of our regularly scheduled program. Congrats to the winners and congrats to everyone. And thank you for participating. Now, as always, I am going to hang around a few minutes. We'll do a little bit of Q&A. We can do that. What is this thing? Oh, that's that. And if you have something you'd like to talk about, now's your chance to get it in. And uh, I'm not going to be staying much longer than five minutes. <clears throat> I won't bore you with my, oh, we're getting a reminder. Here we go about this. Patrick, let me bring this back up. Uh, thanks for reminding me. So I, I get a lot of people ask, where do I get my pads, my close-up pads? And I use Patrick Prezecki's Magical Pat, Pat's Mats, Magical Surfaces by Patrick. And uh, Pat, Pat does custom work, which is what I often use. I have him make these mats to fit the uh, I use a Pile DJ laptop stand. He does have uh, uh, regular sizes, and these are the styles he offers, the Spectrum. Uh, this is, I think, the plush. This is what I use, the plush materials. I actually have all three of these on my desk, and I'll give you a look at these. But if you're looking for really the best close-up pad in the business, you're going to look for Pat's mats. And let's take an up-close look at what these are. Um, now, let's get that off. So this is the plush pad. And I think this one has the most give. It's the thickest pad. And it's the most conducive to, in particular, my coin routine. So I have several of these. I love them. I use them all the time. This is uh, the Spectrum pad, which is a nice textured surface. This is the padding. This is the situation you get. The back, of the, the back of Patrick's pads are also ideal for my flush brush effect. So I do that trick where I paint the royal flushes. These have the best texture for that effect. This is Patrick's uh, Spectrum. And I'm not, a, I'm not like associated or getting paid for any of this. I just think he, he makes the good stuff. This is his uh, standard. I don't know what he calls this. This is a standard one, I guess. Uh, Patrick generally suggests this for his initial customers. They, they last maybe a little longer. They aren't quite as thick, but they are, uh, you know, they're workers' pads. Yeah, these are, these are the small ones. So Patrick sent me a couple of samples, samples to get uh, tests, you know, test out the things. But they're fine. I mean, it's a good – you can shuffle fine on these if you just use it as a little shuffle pad. It's a good size. You can just keep one of these on the edge of your desk and – do a couple of falsies here. This is the Steve Drawn triple cut strip out. I'm doing the push through on the top third and then a straight cut and then the strip out. That was a miss. <clears throat> I'm trying to watch myself in the screen. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Hey, Donnie makes his own. I make my own as well for the tabletops that I use on the street. I make, uh, I use uh, faux suede and a little, either a towel or some light batting to give it a little cushion. Use a bath towel. Bath towel is a great, a great substitute for, uh, you know, put a little pad on there. Matthew. I see you. I remember you. Yes. Yeah, so Matthew had a question last week. He was wondering this. He, he was asking about people who will try to expose your magic. Like you're doing a trick and, you know, you're like making the thing vanish and they say, hey, you got a fake thumb or, you know, you get these people calling out your stuff. I tell you, Matthew, the best advice, first of all, is to ignore them. Okay. So unless someone is jumping out unignorable, if they're in the crowd going, hey, he's got a fake thumb. Ignore that. So any random comments, most of your audience is not going to know what these people are talking about if, when they're talking about fake thumbs or double lips or nice pass or I saw you, you flashed. So step one, ignore the fun haters. Step two, maybe. 
put the spotlight on them. So take this person who obviously wants to be part of the show, make them part of the show, you know, invite them up to pick a card or, Hey, would you shuffle the deck? Oh, you think that's tricky? You should see this thing. Check this out. Rarely, rarely do people really want to ruin the moment. You know, usually it's just jesting and often these type of people really just want that attention. So maybe you could give it to them that way. Third step, and probably the least useful, is to learn some good heckler lines. And uh, all the ones that come to mind right now are street lines that are probably not a YouTube appropriate, but you could do your research on, you know, hey, sir, I don't come to your job and jostle the Slurpee machine. You know, say something chide back at them. This generally, though, creates conflict. And so a lot of the magicians that advocate magician heckler lines, I don't think that's a good approach. So there's our three, there's three ideas on the subject. First and foremost, don't worry about it too much. Just keep plugging along. All right. Callie wants to know how to keep cards 100% together when doing a double lift. Yeah, I had the Kate uh, tape. This this is good, but if you get this stuff, they make this stuff called double stick tape. If you use that, it keeps them together real nice. I got jokes. I got jokes. The other alternative is practice. Practice. Yes, lots of option options. You know, and, and and the nerves are really only overcome by experience. You have to perform your material a number of times so that you gain the experience that you know and project the confidence in that experience that you know the material is going to play well, this will make everything go a lot smoother. Unfortunately, the only way to get that experience is to go out and get it. And you're going to have to suck a little bit to do that. There will be speed bumps, stay the course and you'll get to where you need to be. Uh, craft, the stickers are free with any order. You can get the package for five bucks if you want to support the jam that way. Isak, Kadak, Den, greetings, Indonesia. How you doing? Yeah, teacher give zero attention to disruptive behavior works to a point. We have we have teachers theorizing with me. <clears throat> ah, Gary's got the good stuff. You got the Skinner money with the written instructions, all old packet tricks. I'm licking my chops. We've been we've been chatting about the Skinner re-release. You know, Aldo had a technique. Here's the technique. Just hold it by the ends like this. This is this technique for a double lift is probably the most natural one you can use. Just grab it by the ends, show it like this, put it back. It's not blowing anywhere. Nothing's gonna split. You know, you can get fancy with your Stuart Gordons and all that, but really what that does is kind of draw attention to the move. You know, you start doing these fancy flip arounds, just a nice casual. Depends on the effect, right? You got to have the effect to match the body movements. It's never easy. That's the real truth. It's never easy. Big Ben keeps wanting to see me float stuff, but you've picked my kryptonite, young man. Or Sir, they... <laughs> I don't float many things. Am I, I'm, I am semi-prepared over here, but I'm not going to embarrass myself from uh, <laughs> by trying. Is that what is that what Aldo would advocate? I'm sure he also advocated that pinky count. This is the pinky count, which I discussed at the opening of the show. What I'm doing here is releasing the cards off the tip of the pinky one at a time. This allows you to get your double lift breaks one-handed. So if I'm in this position, I could just 
do this. And now I'm ready to go with my Aldo Colombini turnover. <laughs> All right. I'll try and think up a good levitating one, buddy. The best one to start with is the Die Vernon routine. My favorite one is the David Williamson routine, but I think the Vernon one needs to be studied so that you get a lot of the basic sequences under your belt. Die Vernon routine. John's having a tough time with the pinky count. Yep, that's appropriate. It's a hard move. It will take time to learn. And no, it is not as easy as I make it look. Practice, that's all. Magic man, where have you been? Yeah, you missed all the fun, bro. But look, I'll leave these up for replay. It'll be there for post-stream perusal. Hopefully some kindred spirits will find it and maybe enjoy the experience. Hey, if you did enjoy the time, I always ask for the thumbs up, hit the like button, let, let the algorithm know we're trying hard to get this right on a really a daily basis. And uh, well, I think I'm going to wrap it up, guys. It's been a fun 45, and I do appreciate you spending time with me. That's no lie. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. I'm going to go create something else. I'll see you guys maybe Friday. That's going to be a chow for now. And congrats again to our winner, LLL. Au revoir.